And then part of something that has impacted me in my life a lot was that last summer, um, my father was taken away by immigration. I spent it, um, well, he, my father got separated with my mom when I was in elementary school. And um, he, he has a girlfriend right now. And I spent the, like, some summers with him and there's days where I can go over. And I was spending a week over at his house. So um, it was Saturday, Friday night. We rented movies and we got all kinds of candy. And I got like sugar rushed in the morning. And this police came, we stayed up until like 3 a.m. watching the movies. And then the police came around 5 a.m. And my dad's girlfriend has a daughter. She's 12 years old. And she opened the door and then she, the police asked if our parents were there. And she said no, because she thought that her mom had gone to work, but she was in the back taking the shower, getting ready to go to work. And my dad had already left. So what happened was that um, and then the police asked her, she, he said, OK, he's like, do you know when they come back? And she said, yeah, like around 3 or 5. And then he said, oh, well, are you here by yourself? And she said, no, I'm here with my two sisters. And then he asked how old we were. I was around, yeah, I was 16 years old and my sister was 15, 14. And then it was just last summer. And, and then the police is like, all right, well, I'll come back later. And she closed the door and she told us. And we assumed that it was... Um, when he said he was going to come back later, like it was, he was going to come around back two or five to meet with our parents. But no, and, and then my sister's mom, my dad's girlfriend, comes out. Her name is Tony. She comes out and she says, Larissa, who was that? And she said, oh, it was a cop. I think he was looking for dad because in his paper, it had um, my dad's last name. And then she, my Tony, she got worried and she's like, are you serious? And then because of all that candy I had last night, I was laughing and laughing so hard. She didn't want to believe Larissa. And then I was like, no, Tony, it actually was the police. And then um, Larissa, well, she tries to be like, yeah, it was. We, until my sister actually confirmed it. She's like, no, they're, they're not telling, it's not a lie that it is true. And then Tony called my dad and my dad um, came from work over to the house to see what was going on. So when he got, when he got back, um, like a few minutes later, the police got there. And in the side of the road, you can see how it says immigration in the car. He like hid in a corner. And, and then my dad was talking to the police outside. We were worried and then he was like, he made, um, he gave um, Tony his credit card, his ID, his wallet. He gave it, him everything and then he had certain things to bring to the police and then they talked for a while. I remember I checked through the window and he was still there. And then a few minutes later I check again and he wasn't there. And I was so mad because he was talking on the phone to Tony and we were freaking out. We we're like, wait, what happened? And then she told us at the end when, they, when, he, ended, he, when he hanged up, she said that immigration had taken him and well, I was really sad. I cried. It was like, I don't know, like I didn't want to believe it and I didn't know how to react to it. I just cried and I was super mad because we didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And then a month later or so, we actually got to see him in this, they had him in a jail. So it was a window with, um, it had like little cubes. I don't know if you've ever visited a jail before with people. And then the, the mirror, so it's not clear. It has little black cu cubes, the black lines like that, that make cubes. And then it has a little circle with like one of those old microphones. It had that thing for you to talk and it smells bad. And you were lucky enough if you actually got the opportunity to grab a phone and talk on the phone and you could listen better like that. And the spaces are small, they're like this. And then they have blocks like little like that. And then I felt so sad because my dad, he's, he's a working guy and he's like, they didn't allow him to do anything there. So 
I've never seen my dad in that position. He was like almost crying to me and it broke my heart to see him like that. And he said, he felt desperate. He's like, I don't know what to do. He's like, there's nothing I can do here. I feel like if I need to work, you guys don't have any support. Like who's gonna pay your stuff and everything. And that made me feel really sad. Um, but then later on they moved him over to Denver and it was worse. Like every time I kept on going, Part of me didn't want to go because I know it was going to hurt me more, but I did keep on going because I wanted to see him. And when I did go, it was this time it was in the computer, so you would see like the camera, he would see you, and then in the TV screen or in the computer screen, you could see him. And it that was so unfair to me because there was like you couldn't I couldn't grab him. I missed hugging him, and I miss like. It wasn't the same, it just made me really sad.